Good morning, guys. Exciting news. I was able to find milk the other day when I provisioned and lots of chocolate syrup. So Lexi gets to start her day with her lovely and happy glass of chocolate milk. Well, uh, it is like 7 o'clock in the morning and it's already 34 degrees Celsius at 74% humidity and I made the foolish mistake taking my garbage out this morning, you know, exercising, working, and putting the dinghy up, just dripping with sweat, but that's my tropical life, right? I've been here in Woburn Bay now for about two weeks and rode through all those nasty, terrifying storms. Grenada's gone into total lockdown, we're not allowed to leave our boat anyways, so today I'm going to try to lift my anchors, both of them. I'm a little worried that they might be stuck or caught on rocks because I stopped dragging, but what made me stop dragging is it because my anchors grabbed under rocks. So hopefully I can get my anchors up today and we're going to just go for a very short sail together around the corner. The two bays over is some place called Egmont, Eg Egmont Port, Egmont or Egmont Harbor or something. It's actually the Grenada Hurricane Hole. It's very sheltered, very protected, so hopefully I'll have flat, calm waters and I can play my virtual reality video games again. We'll see. As you guys know, it's a lot of work to lift the anchor and sail this big beast all by myself, but I'm an awesome sailor chick and I always figure out how to do it. I won't be able to film as much as I used to, but I'll bring you along for the journey. I'm going to use my sailor magic just like that and now we have the dinghy secured up on the back davits and the dinghy engine secured on the back rail to get ready for sailing. And like magic the shade tarp has been removed from the front hatch. I keep a rain slash shade tarp on the starboard side of my cockpit for protection. That has to be put away before we go sailing. I'm trying to get the boat ready to go sailing so I can change base, but it is so hot and so muggy, the sweat is just pouring down my face and burning my eyes. I had forgotten how hard solo sailing is and then how extra hard solo sailing is in extreme tropical heat. I have to move slowly and take breaks in between every tiny physical exertion just to calm my, cool my body down and reduce my thermogenesis. It's brutal. To go sailing we have to remove the instrument covers and get all the instruments started. Instruments on. We have to take the main halyard down to the top and lift. And we have to bring it to the head of the main sail. The big question is going to be, can I get my anchors up? In the powerful storms, I dragged from that mooring ball right there, I dragged back about 100 or 150 meters to here until the anchors caught. The question is, what did they catch on? So my anchors might currently be embedded in rock or coral or something that makes them very difficult to lift. I'm a little bit nervous about this. Let's see how this goes. Okay, Teddy, we're going sailing. You're the crew, and it's time for the crew to prepare to toss the boat. Close all the hatches, windows, and secure everything. Get ready to sail, Teddy. 
Okay, teddy bear, you ready to do this crazy thing? All right, let's see if we can get our anchors up. Okay, it's taken me 20 minutes to get the sentinel anchor up. The good news is it was clearly buried in very thick mud and it did come up and it was not stuck on a rock. It did exactly what it was designed to do. All hail the sentinel anchor, all hail the Bruce anchor. Okay, teddy bear. The sentinel anchor's up now and it's properly stowed, which means I'm now on only 100 feet of chain and just my, my, um, my rock anchor. Things are about to get busy in a hurry, so I need to get the engine started. Because once that anchor lifts off the bottom, we're going to start drifting away. Ready, Teddy? As always, we cross our fingers and pray that the engine wants to start today. Everybody seems to like come and go when I do. Nobody left for days and all of a sudden I got two boats directly behind me following me out. I have to wonder if they're actually literally following me or it's just a random coincidence they chose the exact second to leave that I did. These dicks on a catamaran just cut me off between the land and the reef while I was trying to pull my sails out by myself. They just had to motor right up beside me, like within 30 or 40 feet beside me, and cut me off my bow only at like a boat length ahead of me. And look, they're gonna cut me off again. Bunch of dicks. You can see, we're sailing. I gotta trim my Jenny. I just can't do everything at the same time. Look, they're gonna cut me off again. Like, what's the fucking point of that, you bunch of morons? It's a boat full of shirtless men. Inconsiderate men. Stupid, stupid men. There we go, we just had to squeeze by that reef. We're not going far today, oh. And that's why we closed the Dodger. We're not going far, we're just going around the corner to here. This is that place, this is Egg Egmont. We're gonna go see if we can get in there. So it's not terribly far for us to get around, but uh, you know, it's upwind. It always is. The blue people are going to tie the balloon up as well. Check. Now, Marty, are you within reaching distance of your producer? Yes. Excellent. And what sort of hair does your producer have? 50% positive charges and 50% negative charges and what we're doing is you're removing one of the charges so let's assume you're removing the positive charges off the balloon so the balloon is now being clear out. So you've now got conductive pockets of air which are allowing charges to travel through the negative charge trickling down from the cloud. Well, it's not a pretty tack. Um, the uh, the wind swirled around and backwinded on me. As I mentioned way back at the start of this program, 
this is your office. I was sailing oh, along upwind and against the current, and I yeah, was a little bit tight to so it for being in light winds. You the wind swirled around on me 30 degrees and got on my bow. And once it got on my bow, I, I noticed it, came to manual and came hard over, but it was too late. I couldn't uh, I couldn't cross her back up wind. So instead I had to fall off, let it back wind and do attack. I was gonna attack anyways, like very shortly, because my angles are good. Mother Nature decided when I was going to tack, so I did what I was told. Okay, as you guys know, because I'm solo on a race boat, I can't film. It's too hard to try to film as I'm doing stuff. I just rolled and furled and put away my Jenny. I was going along nicely, like I'd made my tack, and I'm heading in towards a very narrow channel with reefs on both sides. I have not eight knots of wind, and I was doing probably five or six knots because the wind has come off the nose a little bit closer to the beam, so I'm in like a close reach. And Wild Child started to pick up and go like a rocket ship. The thing is, is I'm solo, so I don't want to sail full sails, full speed, into a narrow channel with reefs very close by, because being solo, I have to do everything much more slowly. It takes me a long time to put the Jenny away by myself. It takes me a long time to drop the main by myself. So, sort of the theory is when you're a solo sailor, you're just safer to go more slowly. Give yourself longer distances, give yourself longer times, and when you're entering a new place, there's no re like right now I'm 10 knots of wind doing 2.5 knots of boat speed, wind angle at 80 degrees, starboard tack. Okay, I'm going along slowly, I could move much more quickly, but I'm only half a nautical mile from the entrance. So that gave me, so you know, I have 10 minutes to go slowly and, and plan my entry. It's just, when you're solo, you have to sail differently and think differently. There's no crew. This is what a catamaran trying to go upwind looks like. Cats wouldn't even try to sail towards the wind, they only sail downwind, and even then, not even half the time. That's why catamarans are motorboats and not real sailors. Damn! I just broke a nail sailing, and I know that for you men you think it's ridiculous, but for you other women you appreciate, this is a very sad time, because we hate breaking a nail when we sail. Temperature's been very steady. The engine has been behaving absolutely perfectly. All hail the Volkswagen Rabbit engine. Yay! Good girl. You're a good girl. Well, welcome to Egmont Bay in Grenada, southern Grenada. This is what it looks like as you enter. Looks well protected. I get why it's a hurricane hole. The habitat disappears. Elephants are also clashing with humans. Okay, this is where you have to have faith that your charts are wrong. It says that this is four feet deep, three feet deep, and two feet deep, and I have an eight foot keel. But other sailors have assured me that I can get through the pass and that the chart is wrong. Right, my, right now my depth is 42 feet, and it looks smooth ahead. This is looking ahead. I'm just going to go slow and just stay in the middle and have faith that the word from the other sailors is correct. Because right now I'm supposed to be in 10 feet of water and clearly I'm not. So it looks like the chart is wrong. Welcome to Egmont. so hot here that my B&G screens are hot to the touch. They're burning up because the ambient air temperature is like 35 degrees in the, in the electronics box even with the dim screen. 
These screens are piping hot to the touch. It's tropical life, right? 